There's something following us. What is up guys? It's your boy Slasher Junkie back for another Monday morning roundup. So it's been about two weeks since I've done one of these. Um, so I got a lot of stuff and uh, mainly this is all uh, yeah, new pickups that I've had and uh, and watches. So I'm pretty sure I've watched every single one of these since I picked them up. So at least I have something, something to say. Got a good handful of DVDs as well as Blu-rays so there's a good mixture. I mean a lot of good stuff. It's still only on DVD. Uh, it hasn't it doesn't have Blu-rays yet. So, uh, since this is quite a big video, I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, get started. I hope everybody's doing well. Hope you guys are checking out the Horror Holics. Um, we do have another show coming up this Saturday um, where we will be covering um, a zombie film, um, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, yours truly will be on this show, um, as well as Horror Man Cave, FUC Larry. And Steven over at Steven's Horror Craptacular. So, should be fun. So, definitely make sure you check out the Horror Holics. Um, like I said, next show will be this Saturday. And, uh, like I said, hope everybody's doing well. And uh, go ahead and get started with uh, some of the goodness. So, first up, I have Blood Knight, um, The Legend of Mary Hatchet. Uh, this is with Daniel Harris, Bill Mosley. Uh, I think are probably the two biggest stars. Um, it's a 2011 kind of slasher. Uh, not. Not bad done. Not badly done. Um, it's nothing amazing, but uh, for a 2000, you know, 10, 11, 11 slasher, um, it's it's fun watch. All right, uh, next up is The Abandoned, part of this After Dark Horror Fest. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of this one. Um, just didn't like the overall story. Um, yeah, to me it was just kind of, it kind of drug on too much before it really um, got into like the actual exciting parts 2006 film so definitely not one uh, it was an okay watch but not one that I would recommend picking up uh, up next I don't know if this one's actually a horror kind of I guess it could be it does have horror elements and that's uh, King of the Ants I wanted to grab this one because Stuart Gordon recently passed away um, this is probably actually one of his better made films um, I mean not that I don't like dolls and from beyond and some of the other stuff that he's done but as far as well done films this is probably the best it's more like a, a revenge film I, would, I guess you would say but um, yeah definitely needs a blu-ray um, definitely recommend grabbing that one I uh, found this one I'd never heard of this until I watched it and it's Ed and his dead mother with uh, Steve Buscemi Ned Betty um, I had a lot of I had a lot of fun with this this is almost like a um, it's a horror comedy, but almost on like an aspect of Reanimator. Um, they bring his dead mother back, and of course she's, you know, batshit crazy, killing people. Um, Steve Buscemi's great. Ned Betty still is a show, though. Like his comedy in this is is awesome. So yeah, uh, a nice little gem that I found. Ed Ed and his dead mother. All right, next up is Big Legend. This is a Sasquatch, I guess, movie. Um. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Um, it was just okay. It has Lance Hendrickson, Amanda Weiss in this as well. Adrian Barbeau. I don't remember her in this. Maybe toward the end. Um, but yeah, it was just. It it was okay. Yeah, nothing nothing great um, as far as Bigfoot films. A lot more have been done. There is a ridiculous scene at the end though where he fights the uh, the Bigfoot. Uh, picked up Tarantulas, The Deadly Cargo. I believe this is a 77 film. Yeah, with Tom Atkins. Um, it's, I mean, it's a killer spider film. Not my favorite killer spider film. Um, you know, it's pretty much Tom Atkins is hauling a load of, I believe it's coffee beans. And uh, somehow this tarantula gets on board, crashes a plane, the tarantulas get loose. Uh, Tom Atkins not even in this that much. Maybe 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, yeah it's... It, it needs a Blu-ray. I, I could see a better transfer. They picked up Blood Cult. Mm. 
not the greatest slasher at all. I believe this was 80, uh, what was this? Hmm. Uh, it's 80 something. I'm totally going blank here. 85. There we go. Um, I believe the, the second one of this is, is definitely better. Uh, I believe it's called Revenge. It's kind of a cult, cult slasher. Um, of the name Blood Cult should kind of give that away. But, um, yeah, I can't say that I'm the biggest fan of that one. <laughs> oh, then we have this one. The Last Shark. An Italian Jaws ripoff. I mean, it's awful. But it's, um, it's still funny. It's fun to watch just because it's so off. I mean, it's such a Jaws ripoff. Like, there's a character that even looks like they tried to make look like Quint in this. Um, I mean, the shark is just so ridiculous. It's like, some parts are using, like, live National Geographic footage in it. Um, I mean, when you do kind of see the actual prop shark, I mean, it's not bad looking. Uh, there's one part where it jumps out of the water, like, through the middle of a boat, and a dummy goes, well, it's so ridiculous. And it's an Italian film that was filmed like in Georgia so like the people they have I mean it's it's, it's so ridiculous but it, it is a fun watch I mean I will say that I could see somebody like Severin or Vinegar releasing that uh I picked up Ants another one that another killer animal insect film that doesn't have a blu-ray uh Suzanne Summers. I love how they put her on the cover of this she's barely even in the movie at all um I enjoyed this one though this is like uh they're it's like a resort or something. They're trying to they're remodeling and, and digging some stuff up, and uh, they end up digging up this ant bed of you know these killer ants that just um, and just like I mean I'm not big on insects crawling all over me to begin with. So having these ants like crawl over and these are you know not CGI ants or anything crawling all over these people is they're a lot better than me. I no, couldn't do it. All right. Also, so I've been getting into a. Kind of a serial killer thing of checking out serial killer films. And um, I saw this one. Came across this one. I don't remember who recommended it. But it's uh, Citizen X. This is about... Oh, what was his name? Um, is it Ivola Inko? The Russian serial killer? Man, I really... I believe that's what his name is. Ivola Inko. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally going blank. But yeah, uh, really good film. Donald Sutherland is in this. Um, I enjoyed it. That's, it is a bit long. I think it was like, oh, it's an hour and 42 minutes. Um, yeah, I wish they would have showed a little bit more. It's almost like a made-for-TV kind of film. They, did, they didn't really. Um, but yeah, I, I still still enjoyed it. It's definitely, if you if you like serial killer films, um, this guy was brutal. It's actually an HBO film, so that makes sense. <laughs> Picked up Chubby's. Um, I'm actually surprised this one even has a release. I believe they had an issue with, um, the, the characters they were using for, um, for these. Um, so they had some, like, rights issues because they kind of stole them. Um, but it's, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's pretty much these alien creatures are kind of crawling up these people's assholes and turning them into, like, zombies that like to eat flesh and and whatnot it's it's ridiculous it's it's funny though it does have some funny moments was it boglins i think that it it stole from the boglin things from like the 80s they're identical i think that's what they used in this movie so um but yeah enjoy chubbies all right next up uh talking about a serial killer thing the gray man um cannot remember the serial killer albert fish that's it this one is a lot more brutal than Citizen X. Um, I mean, this guy was killing kids. Um, he was ruthless. Um, but And he was a like, sado, whatever, people that, I mean, he he was fucked up in the head, like, uh, big time. Um, I definitely recommend The Gray Man, though. Definitely recommend checking that one out. <laughs> Picked up this one, uh, Wrestle Massacre. I believe this just got, just got a release. It's from Brad Twig. Um, I really like Brad Twig stuff as, as far as a small director. I was a wrestling fan growing up, um, so I had a blast with this one. Um, the main character, Richie Acevedo, does it. I think he's like an amateur wrestler. <clears throat> Anyways, he does a great job in this. He has a lot of like big time or legendary wrestlers. Um, Nikolai Volkov, Tony Atlas, um, Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. Uh, 
It's 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 a lot of fun to watch. The kills are brutal. I mean, if you want to see somebody get their head ripped off with like a camel clutch, I mean, the blood, everything, everything you could ask for in a low budget war film like this. The effects are great. Um, you know, comedy, every, everything you could ask for. I, Russell Massacre does that. Okay, picked up the tunnel. Never seen this one. This is a um, found footage, right along the lines of like uh, I want to say this is an Australian movie. Um, or British, maybe, I can't remember. R right along the lines of, um, as above, so below. This one, though, I think is a lot more well done. Probably one of, honestly, one of my favorite found footage films. I'm not a huge uh, fan of, like, Blair Witch Project, or I'm not a huge fan of the genre. It's an Australian film. Not a huge fan of the genre of found footage to begin with, but this is so well done. And on a low budget, I think they shot this for, like, a, hundred thousand um, very cheaply i don't remember um but god so well done um creepy claustrophobic um i mean just intense from start to start to finish so yeah definitely recommend the tunnel i believe this is out of print though so good luck trying to find it uh next up got cut uh this is a 2000 when was this done 2000 slasher um I wasn't the biggest fan. Molly Ringwald's in this. Kylie Minogue. It, it, it's kind of like a... You know, I'm not the biggest on 2000 slashers. I mean, I don't think it was... You know, my screen, you know, they weren't very well done. Um, this one, they're trying to sh reshoot a movie. Um, I just think it... The killer looks pretty cool. Some of the kills were alright. Um, but, yeah, it was just kind of running the hill for me. Alright, up next... <laughs> Uh, from Full Moon, Ginger Dead Man. It's ridiculous. Scary BC as a killer gingerbread man. I mean, what more could you ask for? I got this really cheap. Actually, I think the guy I bought one of these from actually sent me this one for free. So, I couldn't. Alright, up next I got some bootleg films that I uh, picked up that don't have DVD releases or anything. Uh, first up is The Intruder Within. Really enjoyed this one. I'd never seen it before. It's a 70s I don't even remember what year. Mid to late 70s, I believe. Um, almost like The Thing and Alien kind of mixed together. Uh, except they're on an oil rig. Um, which was really cool premise. I would love to see this get, um, you know, a good release. A Blu-ray, even a DVD. Uh, Transfers, yeah, of course it's not good. This is just a VHS rip. But, um, yeah. Would definitely, like, I would definitely buy if that got a better release. Uh, up next, Open House. This one's actually like an HD uh, rip, so I don't know if somebody's about to do this one pretty soon. I guess they will. I paid real cheap for these, like three or four bucks, so I'm not worried about the money lost on this. But this is a, um, I think, early 90 maybe slasher. If I had to guess, I believe it's like 1990 or late 80, 89. Um, 87, I believe, is, is the actual year. Um, but it's fun. Adrian Barbeau, it's about a guy who is killing people at, you know, at open houses. Um, yeah, that, this one, another one that I, I would recommend. Uh, up next, Eyes of Fire. Um, somebody recommended this to me because it was on like a, a witch vibe. I believe this is 87. I could see, um, I wasn't a huge fan of it though. Um, to me it was kind of boring. So yeah, definitely not one I would recommend or probably pick up if it came to Blu-ray. Uh, this is one I would pick up, Terror in the Swamp, almost like a creature from the Black Lagoon ripoff, but in Louisiana swamps. Uh, 1984 film, uh, the creature is ridiculous. It's pretty much a giant um, nutria is what it is. I mean, that is what it is. It's a, a nutria that got into some mutant hazardous waste or something, and now it's going around killing people. But yeah, a lot of fun. And then last but not least, Iced. Um, it's a snowy uh, it's a ski resort slasher um, it's not great um, but it, it's still a fun watch I, I will say all right got a couple more DVDs here next up uh, black Cadillac uh, it's kind of a road horror I guess you would say Randy Quaid um, when did this come out 2002 it's not bad uh, it's, it's not great it's kind of a I guess more of a thriller um, but yeah, I had fun with it. 
And then, uh, speaking of found footage films, Alien Abduction. Um, this one I really, I, I did enjoy. Um, it's filmed, uh, I live in North Carolina, so this is filmed the Brown Mountain, which isn't too far from here. Uh, where they've supposedly seen, uh, some, like, Northern Lights type things. Um, or they call the Brown Mountain Lights. Um, but yeah, I had fun with this in a, you know, found footage type way. The aliens are pretty cool. Uh, the abduction scenes are, are pretty well done. Um, it gets a little slow at some parts, but yeah, not a, not a bad watch, especially if you're into alien films or found footage. And then last but not least, um, for DVDs, picked up Ed Gein, uh, amazing film. Um, Steve Relsback is, and I think I talked uh, a couple weeks ago about him and Helter Skelter. Uh, he's amazing as Ed Gein here as well. Um, yeah. A great performance. I mean, so many movies have been based off Ed Gein, the character, but I think um, this has to be, or the person, this has to be one of the, definitely one of the better ones. All right, so that's it for DVDs, guys. Next, I'm going to go into the Blu-rays, and I uh, have quite a few of those. Um, hit some up from the Vinegar Syndrome sale, as well as um, a couple other sales, I think, that came, came up. Um, so first up, we have Spasmo. This is a Ennio Morricone um, Giallo. It's oh okay. I mean, it's it's a similar premise. I've seen a lot of these. It's it's a good film. Uh, it's not. I wouldn't put it up there. It's like one of my favorite Giallo films. Um, but yeah, I think this was produced by Umberto Lindsay or directed. Oh my my bad. It's a directed by Umberto Lindsay. The score was by Ennio Morricone. I don't know what I was thinking there, but yeah. Spasmo, it's a fun watch. Um, picked up Lake Nowhere. Um, this is a cool film. It's kind of like a, th it was kind of, I don't know, maybe five years ago, I believe. And it was done to, that's like a flashback to the like early 80s kind of slasher. It was pretty well done. It's real short. It's only like 51 minutes. Uh, but some of the kills and whatnot are, are pretty awesome. I just wish they kind of would have made this into a more feature. They have like that VHS grainy, graininess into it. Um, but yeah. If you're a fan of 80s slashers, I would definitely recommend that one. Uh, picked up Mother's Day, the original. I think I showed off the, I guess, reimagining in the last one. Um, this one's crazy. I mean, these it's about a mother who has these two crazy, like, hick sons. They're, and they end up kidnapping these girls. And yeah, it's just, it's nuts. If, um, But, yeah, a good, fun 80s, early 80s. Um, when did this come out? 80, I want to say, like, 81. 82, but around that time. 80. Sounds close. All right. Next up, The Black Coat's Daughter. I know a lot of people really love this film, rave on this film. I just think it's okay. I'd seen it before. I uh, figured I'd give it a rewatch. Bought it. I think I got this at like the pawn shop for like, or the flea market for like three bucks. Give it a rewatch. And <clears throat> yeah, it's okay, but I, I don't love the film. It does have a pretty creepy atmosphere. Um, but I mean, I, for me, I kind of saw where it was going the entire time. Uh, even my first watch, of course I saw it this time, but even my first watch, I kind of knew, um, Emma Roberts, so does, does play a pretty good character, but yeah, to me, it's, it's okay. Um, picked up Night Game with, uh, Roy Scheider from, of course, Jaws, this, um, 89 film released by Olive. Um, I would say this is almost like a, a slasher, a thriller. Um, I enjoyed it. It's nothing great. It's not the best one. It's all re evolved, revolved around baseball, which I thought was pretty cool, and Houston, which I used to live in Houston. So, um, I thought that premise was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, if you can find it cheap, I would say it's worth a watch. Um, have children shouldn't play with dead things. Not a huge fan of this one. This VCI release isn't that good as well. The transfer is pretty blah. Um, but I don't know if anybody else has done one. Maybe Arrow. I can't remember. Um, but yeah. Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things. A, a fun little zombie film. But yeah. Who Can Kill a Child? Uh, from Mondo Macabro. Uh -huh. I mean, it's a killer f kid film. About um, this c couple that's going on vacation to an island that find nothing but kids and then they start finding out why uh, for late set I think it's 76 I enjoy it though I think it's one of the better 
uh, more well-made um, Killer Kid films as far as the premise, the story, um, how it goes. Yeah, it's, it, it, it is well, well done. Uh, picked up Evil Speak with good old Clint Howard. Absolutely batshit crazy film from 81. Uh, Clint Howard is just... I mean, actually, I think this is probably one of his better performances, though, in a film. Um, some of the... Like, the, the last ten minutes of this are, like, crazy. Um, the effects in it are well done. Uh, just the whole storyline, though, is, is, like, batshit crazy. But, yeah, definitely a fun watch. I had to grab this one because I believe it's going out of print. Uh, a new release that Screen Factory just did. The Hills Have... The Hills Have... The Hills Run Red uh, with the baby face killer. Um, I enjoyed this one. I actually had the DVD, so I upgraded it. Um, Babyface, I think, is a cool-looking killer. I'm not a huge fan of the story of the movie, but the kills and everything are, pretty, are, are very well done. This release is packed full of special features. This could have probably made a collector's edition out of it. Um, but yeah, if um, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of 2000 Slashers, but I definitely think this is one of the, um, the better... The better ones. I think this is from 2009. So, yeah. Hills Run Red. Good film. All right. I uh, picked up The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Um, Sergio Martino. What more could you ask for? Guy does awesome, some amazing giallos. Um, the girl in here. What's her name? Um, Edwidge Finnish. Dime piece. I need me an Italian woman like that. Um, absolutely beautiful. She's still beautiful to this day. Honestly, being 70-some years old. Um, not my absolute favorite Jallo though, but, uh, definitely one that I recommend anything from Sergio Martina. I recommend, um, it's, it is very well done though. Um, was able to luckily grab, uh, the deadly spawn. Uh, love this film, the creature, uh, so awesome looking. Uh, the effects in this are so well done. Um, it's a very hard, uh, Blu-ray to find now. Um, luckily was able to find it for a decent deal, but yeah, deadly spawn. Awesome creature feature film. Another uh, out of print, I believe, film. Deadly Eyes. Amazing killer rat film uh, with rats that are dressed, or like little wiener dogs that are dressed up as rats. Um, a 1982 film. Uh, Transfer looks great on this uh, for being one of Scream Factory's first films. Uh, if you're a killer rat, I'm, I'm a killer animal film fan. So, yeah, of course, Deadly Eyes. I'm going to be... All four. All right. Um, up next, we have The Horseman, a um, revenge film that is very well done into, uh, like, the premise of I Saw the Devil. Um, this is brutal. Uh, guy's daughter gets um, gets killed, and he goes pretty much out for to find these guys in a brutal way and kills each one of them in a very brutal way. Um, very well shot. I believe this is an English... English film, um, as far, um, but yeah, definitely, a, a, probably one of the better revenge films that I've seen in, in, a, in quite a while. Um, uh, up next, I picked up, uh, Vice Academy, this one through three, these films are absolutely ridiculous, but they're a fun watch for me. I watched one and two, I did not watch three yet. Linnea Quigley, though, looks beautiful in this, as well as, uh, Ginger Lynn Allen. Um, it's almost like a police academy aspect. But with a lot of, you know, tits and ass and, um, you know, some funny moments. Um, and it's just a crazy story. Stories in, in both of those, um, you know. But they're to me, they're fun watches. Uh, picked up The Cleaning Lady. This is, a I believe, a manufactured on-demand Blu-ray. I believe this only actually had a DVD. Um, I did enjoy this, though. I believe this came out last year, if I'm not mistaken, or 2018. Um, it, toward the end it got, it got kind of slow. Um, but yeah, the overall premise though, I, I enjoyed, enjoyed the story. Uh, like the way that it was shot. Um, the girl in here is creepy as shit. Um, and, but you kind of feel for her compared to the asshole lady that she's kind of, kind of dealing with. So yeah, definitely one I would recommend though. Um, picked up this two pack of Hell of the Living Dead and Rats, Night of Terror. I believe this is the only way you can get rats in a Region A release. Um, Hell of the Living Dead was okay from what I remember. Uh, it's a Bruno Mattai. I believe both of these are Bruno Mattai films. Yeah. 
Uh, Rats, though, was great. Night of Terror. Um, I mean, I'm a sucker for killer and a full film. So, yeah, definitely would recommend Rats. Uh, if you're a big-time fan of zombie films or Bruno Matai films, I would I would recommend Hell of the Living Dead. If not, it might be one you want to kind of steer clear of. Um, pick this one up, Die, Die, Delta Pi. I believe this came out in 2015, maybe. 14. Uh, the director, Sean... Donahue was selling these on uh, Facebook, so I had to grab one. Um, it's it's okay for a slasher. I believe I saw this back when it originally came out on DVD, but yeah, it's not it's not bad. It's kind of shot in that 80s 80 slasherist. Um, some of the kills are, are pretty well done. Um, if I would say if you can find it for kind of cheap, I believe they only made well from on here it says limited to 300 units. I don't know how many he has though, but you can reach out to him on on Facebook at Sean Donahue if you want one. Oh, uh, some Hammer Horror, Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I know a lot of people don't like Hammer films, and a lot of people do, it's kind of a taste, um, but this one was just okay for me, um, I mean, there's a lot more other Hammer films that I'm a lot bigger fan of, but yeah, Captain Kronos, uh, picked up Paganini Horror, Donald Pleasance, um, I enjoyed this one. Like, I had fun with it. Late 80s, um, kind of like Hidden Gem to me. Um, about them trying to shoot a music video with a stolen um, music piece. Um, of course, that brings back, um, you know, demons and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, if you can pick this up in the Severance sale, I believe it's super cheap, like 8 10 bucks. So, yeah, definitely recommend grabbing that. Uh, my buddy Jordan, the Viz, sent me over... Uh, Boar, um, he wasn't a huge fan of this. I'm a killer animal film fan. Australian horror. Uh, really enjoyed this, though. Um, the way it's shot. Um, <laughs> the character of anything with, what's his name, John Jarrett in it. Of course, it seems like he's in every Australian film. Uh, the Boar looks amazing at the beginning with the practical effects. Toward the end, the CGI is pretty bad on it. Uh, especially at the end, the CGI is awful. Um, Bill Mosley's in this as well. His kill is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I had fun with it. It's not great, but, you know, like I said, if you find it kind of cheap, I would recommend it. All right, um, start with this before I get into my Vinegar Syndrome pickup from the sale. Uh, last one, I picked up the American Horror Project, Volume 2. Uh, this includes The Child, Dark August, and Dream No Evil. I did watch The Child and Dark August. Um, the Child was just okay. Dark August was, was pretty good. Um, these are all like, I believe, mid, right in mid-70s, 75, 76 films. Um, but yeah, wanted to grab this set before it went out of print. I uh, need to check out Dream No Evil, though. All right, last ones were my Vinegar Syndrome grabs. Um, Blood Games, really enjoyed this one. A cool uh, female, like kind of a revenge film. Of course, the slipcover on this is amazing. Um, yeah, about um, uh, the beginning part of this, like the first 10 minutes is amazing when these girls, girls are playing baseball against a bunch of guys. And it's probably the most brutal game of baseball I've ever seen. But yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome though. The, some of the kills are, are really good in this. Of course, the chicks look hot. A winner, winner. Uh, Dolly Dearest, complete Chucky ripoff, but I think it's pretty well done. Uh, Spanish film. I believe this is filmed in Mexico. Um, I enjoy it though. Um, Ed Gale plays actual the doll. That would be hot. It's an inside joke there. But yeah, Dolly Dearest. I, I enjoy it. I know a lot of people don't. Of course, it's not on the realm of child's play or anything. Deadline. Another um, gem from Vinegar that I actually enjoyed. Uh, it's about a Writer that's trying to write, and he's going batshit crazy at the same time. Um, trying to come up with an idea for his story. Um, but yeah, I think this is another one that, that they uh, they did well on. Uh, Flesh Eating Mothers. I believe this is, if I'm not mistaken, is a trauma film. Um, I'm pretty sure it is a trauma film. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I mean, the the gore in it and everything is, is, of course, fucking amazing. But uh, yeah, I think overall story is kind of ridiculous. Um, but yeah, yeah, to me it was it was okay. Um, 
not a not a great watch. Not one that I could see myself watching numerous times. Uh, picked up L.A. Wars. I think this one their latest uh, VSA release. I'm I'm a sucker for like '80s action films, and this one I was surprisingly uh, enjoyed for a low budget like action film. Um, the you know just the ridiculousness in this. The just seeing so much '80s. The '80s soundtrack. Um, the explosions, like everything. It's to me, it was a fun watch. I mean, it's the same story that you see in tons of 80 action films. But uh, picked up Night Train to Terror. Uh, to me, this one's just an okay anthology. Uh, some of the stories are definitely better than others. Pretty much God and Satan riding on a train to hell, bound to hell, and uh, they're kind of fighting over souls back and forth, and it kind of goes through in individual stories. Like I said, some of the stories are, are better than others. It's an okay. Uh, severed arm. Uh, beginning of this, it started out great. Uh, kind of got kind of slow toward the middle. In the end, it did kind of pick up a little bit. But um, I just believe it's a 75, 76 film. Um, slow cover's kind of bland on this one to me. But it's just, that one was okay. Uh, the Immortalizer. I did have a blast with this one. Kind of a mad scientist film. Um, with great effects in it. Um, kind of reminded me of like an evil town type thing. Where they're bringing in these bodies to swap out... Um, older people so they're they're pretty much swapping brains with uh older people so that these older people can have uh younger bodies um uh, but yeah i thought it was pretty well done i enjoyed it all right and the last two um uh picked up one of arrow's latest release dream demon which i thought this one was it was okay um it's it's well shot like it's very uh kind of artsy to me uh the, the way that it's shot I enjoyed it though. Um, I think it's going to be like a selective taste uh, on on who might actually like this one. Though. And then okay, last one out of the haul here is Rad the 4K. I actually, just got done watching this um, not too long ago, and I hadn't seen this probably since I was you know 10. Um, and I enjoyed it. It's straight 80s vibe, you know, 80s BMX, 80s clothing killer 80s soundtrack um to me it's a lot of fun to watch i mean it kind of brings you back to that 80s retro 80s vibe um to me this is like right up there with like gleam in the cube um vision quest like those movies i watched a bunch when i was like you know younger and uh yeah red to me was a lot of fun i know this one's going for like ridiculous prices now because they sold all eleven thousand copies i believe but yeah i definitely recommend red if you can find it all right guys so that's, oh, no, I do have one little more stack. And these are some bootleg Blu-rays that I grabbed. Uh, well, not bootleg, um, some of these. These are all from like Stinky Tuna, I believe. They kind of put out Netflix shows. Picked up The Ritual, which I did enjoy this one, I believe from year before last, yeah, 2018. These are high def rips. Um, I don't know if they have some kind of deal with um, Netflix to do these. Um, but yeah, you never know when they're gonna take them off Netflix, so it's always good to have a hard copy. So yeah, The Ritual, um, Apostle, I believe this one was also 2018. I enjoyed this one. Rewatched it. Didn't enjoy it as much this go around as I did last time, um, but still, it's it's a great film on the on the lines of like if you're a fan of like Wicker Man or um, Midsummer, like some films that have um, that um, cult type vibe to it you know, or old English vibes. Yeah. And then I picked up um, Fright Night Two. Uh, hopefully this one day we'll get a legit Blu-ray release, but this does look good. It's a HD um, And yeah, I as a sequel to the original Fright Cry, Fright Crate, Fright Night um, I enjoy it. I enjoy the way that it's done um, Yeah, highly recommend it as a sequel. I don't think it gets enough love and last but not least picked up Dragon Slayer uh, I enjoyed watching this one as a kid. I believe this came out in like 82 um, The dragon in this was always awesome um, I've always been a, a fan of like sword and sorcery movies as well. So yeah, glad to pick up Dragon Slayer. Um, it's a great transfer, high definition. Um, yeah, definitely one I would recommend. So that's it, guys. That is the Monday morning roundup, a whole 30-some minute video. It's ridiculous. And I'm sure I'll have another one for you in about two weeks. Um, if there's anything you guys have seen here or you recommend, uh, like I said, I've watched all these. Or if you have any other questions about them, let me know, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace!